this year started with the killing of the journalist Soleimani. A couple of days ago, just they hanged the guy because he, he, no one wants to live there because the system itself is not operating efficiently. Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. So uh, today I decided to talk about the relationship between the United States and Iran. So, uh, and my PhD work was about the relationship of the government of Iran with uh, other states in the Middle East. And the big thing now in the news is that lots of Middle Eastern states, they started to build their relationships with Israel, which is a good thing, I think, because at the end of the day, more cooperation we will have in, on international level the easier it will be for people to deal and to live in a peace without a war. The big thing about Iran, of course, this year started with the killing of the journalist Soleimani, which was a crazy thing and almost triggered Third World War War to start. But I think actually the World War would not start and uh, I'm trying to understand why he was targeted. Obviously, the main issue was that he was always triggering the military conflicts in uh, Iraq and the um, killing of Soleimani was kind of a prevention of the uh, militia, Shia militia, which is popular. If you don't know, the Iraq is uh, divided between Sunni and Shia Muslims, whereas Shia Muslims are a little high in numbers than uh, Sunni Muslims. It's the only Arabic country, I believe, that has a Shia minority. Uh, majority. And uh, that's one of the reasons besides other, which is, uh, you know, Iraq is a multinational country. There, there are Arabs, Shia Arabs, Sunni Arabs, and there are Kurds. And Kurds are uh, one of the uh, biggest uh, national minorities there. So there's constant conflicts between all of these groups. Let me start with how Iran became the problem as it is now for the all uh, of the democratic world. Um, the thing is that there was Islamic revolution in Iran and before that Iran actually was one of the best counterparts of United States in the Middle East. Iran is a third country I believe with the oil reserves in the gas reserves. Uh, uh, so it's pretty rich with the national resources and United States obviously have the companies that dominate in the oil and gas uh, manufacturing. So. The Shah of Iran, who was a ruler of Iran before the revolution and uh, that government, I believe it was the Carter, the last president, uh, who had a very good relations with Iran. They had a very good relations. But then a revolution happens and it's a pretty long story. You know, there's lots of information on YouTube on why the revolution happened. Then the Islamists come to government and uh, first time when they came to official government, they declare that they won't be ruling country. They're just there to pass the governance to some other better options like democratic government because there were also communists who were trying to take the power and Islamists obviously were against that because if communists would take the power, they will also be against Islamists and it will trigger another revolution. Anyways, after two years, the leader of Islamic revolution, Khomeini, he, uh, pass away and uh, the governance is taken by, by the person who is governing Iran for more than 30 years. Uh, his name is Ayatollah Khamenei. It's a similar names, but uh, different people. Anyways, what this guy does, he creates a uh, so-called Iranian government that does crazy things. First of all, they get rid of all democratic people a couple days ago, just they hanged a guy because he, he was criticizing. And uh, this is not normal. I don't think that it can create potentially good economics or situation for the uh, population to develop there. And overall, it will be bad for the government itself. But there is also a flip side of this story. One of the biggest money makers for the United States is uh, arm dealing and uh, one of the biggest buyers of United States arms is Saudi Arabia and Saudi Arabia is obviously against Iran in the Middle East. Speaking uh, broadly, Saudi Arabia is number one enemy of the Iranian government right now. Although both states are uh, Islamic states, uh, in Iran the governance is under Shia Muslims and in Saudi Arabia 
it's under Sunni Muslims mostly it's actually not even like a real Sunni Muslims it's more of the Wahhabi that's what they call them in the Middle East anyways the thing is the both uh, regimes they hate each other and they try to dominate in the region and this creates a crazy tensions obviously Iran is backed by Russia now and Saudi Arabia is backed by United States so basically it's oil in exchange to arms this is a win-win situation but United States also needs someone that will you know make Saudis to buy the arms and uh, in this case Iranian government is a kind of a good thing to have in the Middle East because otherwise Saudis might still buy uh, American arms but they won't continue to buy in a such big numbers it's like spider-man movie you probably seen it like you know if to explain it's in pretty basic characters uh, spider-man always needs someone who is against him like an anti-hero guy sometimes it's the venom guy sometimes it's another crazy people from the marvel comics otherwise no one will be interested in watching this movie right i mean he have to fight some evil kind of person and this is uh, the whole script of the movie and uh, they even made a movie on Amazon lately called Tehran about the Mossad agents operating in Tehran in Iran I think it's not actually it's a kind of Hollywood type thing because I don't think that Iran is that powerful although they are saying that they're producing some nuclear weapons I don't think that is completely true it, they might get some technology from here and there but uh, Iran itself has no that scientific power to produce the uh, arms that will really work and might somehow represent real threat to the Europe or the United States. First of all, they have the huge brain uh, drain from Iran. Everyone, literally everyone whom I know, they are trying to escape Iran. Doesn't matter if they are, you know, pro-government, they are anti-government. No one wants to live there because the system itself is not operating efficiently the ecology is in really bad condition the prices inflation is crazy there is no democracy and overall people are not happy second uh, iran does not have the technology that is letting them to operate uh, on the levels that could compete potentially with saudi arabia or iran of course iran it has like a huge scientific roots it's very it's one of the not many countries that has machinery as a part of their economy but most of it it was built before the revolution started and it's everything is pretty much outdated now main trading partner of Iran is China which is obviously China is not able to sell like high-tech stuff to Iran because of the sanctions either way and especially now when the United States is trying to diversify their production uh, fields taking the manufacturing from China to other countries in Southeast Asia. Iran has really ineffective management. People who are mainly not related to the economics, for instance, the current president of Iran, the Rouhani, this guy is a cleric, he is not a politician. Although he has a degree uh, from Scotland, God knows how he got this degree because his English is horrible. Uh, but uh, he tends to have a degree in Islamic law which is not the law doctorate that we have here completely different basically it's based on the rules of the uh, uh, Islamic traditions and less related to the real law and this is how the whole government operates there not only the president so basically I think that although Iranian regime have to go this is a matter of time some states especially the states who are trading they have a very good trading relations with the government that are against iran would not be interested in uh, having iranian regime go away so early thank you for watching don't forget to subscribe and put a like on this video